Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to a brand new Roblox Studio video. My name is Floppy, and in today's tutorial video, we're going to be going over how to make a developer product give currency. Now, this type of system is seen throughout a big majority of games. This can vary from tycoons to simulators to even hangouts. Now, what this system is actually going to be doing is it is going to be giving a player a leader stat value, basically more like a currency, for example, cash. So how the system would work is if the player purchases this specific developer product, then they're going to receive X amount of coins, cash, or whatever really leader stat you actually want it to add on to. So for starters, we wanna make sure our explorer and properties are enabled. If our explorer and properties are not enabled, click on the top bar here, by view, and enable explorer and properties, and they should show up somewhere over your screen. You then wanna click back on home, and now we actually wanna go and create our GUI, which is going to be prompting our buttons to show, or actually prompting the player to purchase the developer product, because what, what will happen is a player has to click the button first until the purchase product page shows up, then they purchase it, and then everything else happens. So we're gonna be starting from kind of step one here of just making the GUI. So we wanna click on the plus button next to the starter GUI and insert a screen GUI. Now you can go and really create whatever GUI you feel like. Um, it's completely up to you. For example, if you really wanted to, you could follow a one of my tutorials I did previously on how to make a Game Pass shop or how to make a donation GUI, for example. You can kind of incorporate those tutorials with this tutorial. And obviously, for example, the Game Pass shop that shop, or that that game part, or the, sorry, that tutorial, it cr shows you how to create a button which opens an additional GUI, which, for example, you could have coins or like a plus button, which will then direct them to that bigger GUI with everything there. So incorporate other tutorials into this type of system, and then obviously you just create it accordingly. So for now, we're just going to be using two standard buttons. Now, in this tutorial, we're also going to be including two variations. We're going to have one that is going to give us one coin, and then one that is also going to give us five coins, because usually there is a variety of different packs or, or amounts you can choose from, depending on how much currency you want to purchase. So now that we've inserted the screen GUI, keep in mind, you obviously go and adjust how you want your GUI to work. For this tutorial, all I'm gonna, all I'm gonna be having is two text buttons, because as mentioned, we will be having variations. So I'm just gonna duplicate that, doesn't need to be anything fancy. And there's our two buttons. One will be for one coin, and then the other one will be for five coins. So obviously go and customize these now. You go and make them pretty with UI corners, for example. And if you don't know what UI corners do, they basically add a nice little bit of a curve to it to make it not so blocky and it and whatnot there so go and customize your text buttons change the text how you change the font you can all do that all in properties here but go and customize your gui so now that you've gone and created your gui something else i wanted to mention is you can also use image buttons it does the exact same thing it doesn't matter if you use a text button or an image button they both work the same so for now that we've gone now that we've gone and created our GUI, we actually want to go and now make the system that is actually going to prompt the player to purchase the developer product. So what we want to do, we want to head over here to our text button, click on the plus button and insert a local script. We want to do that with both our text buttons just like that. So now we will have two local scripts, one in our first text button and one in the other one. So now that you've inserted the local scripts inside of your text buttons, you want to go down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that is in the description, bring it back to Roblox Studio. It's going to be named something like prompt to purchase script one, something like that, and then go control V or right click paste and paste in the new code. We then want to do this also for the other local script. So remove all the previous code and then paste in the exact same code that we had before and that we used in the other text button. So now that you've done that, we can leave them just like that because we're gonna to have to come back and edit them. So now we actually are needing our developer product ID and we need to go and change this ID to our developer product ID. So to make a developer product, you wanna go click on your game settings. Now, if your game is not already published to Roblox, you wanna go and f finish off the publishing page there. And then when you rejoin, it will, you click on game settings, it should look something like this. You then wanna to go to monetization and then where it says developer products, I'm gonna click create twice this will cr create us two developer products. So I'm gonna click on the three dots and I'm gonna click edit. So we'll keep this one as a developer product two. Um, we'll go and call this uh, one coin, for example, because this is gonna be purchasing our one coin. And then we can click on the game settings again, monetization. And then we can also go and change this one here, developer product one to, for example, five coins, because now this is gonna be the one that is giving five coins. 
just like that perfect and you can change the price there I'm just gonna keep the price at one robux because it's not necessary for me to go and change it so now that we've gone and got our developer products we now want to go and add them into the scripts accordingly so for example our one coin is going to be going into this text button right here sorry our text yes our text button right there so we click on the three dots here click copy ID to clipboard click X and then we want to find our text button which is for our one coin so that is here go to that local script remove this ID and then paste in that new ID so you want to do the exact same thing for the five coin one we go back to our monetization copy our five coins copy ID take that back to the script and make sure it is the correct one yep excellent so we go there local script change this ID to our new developer product ID so now we have gone and completed the first step of the actual system. Now this is going to be the system which actually prompts the players to purchase that developer product. Now a player can purchase this as many times as they would like. It's completely up to you due to it being a developer product. So that is the main system which is actually going to prompt the developer product to the player. So now we want to head over to our server script service. We want to click on the plus button and we can actually leave our started GUI and all that for now. So we can actually just kind of close that up there so it's not in our way and uh, just kind of leave it like that. It doesn't need to go anywhere. Leave it right there. And then we want to head over to our server script service, click on the plus button, insert a script, and then we want to open up the script. Now this is going to be our main data saving store, which is basically where all the data is going to be saved. Every single game on Roblox that has any data progress or you've had progress in, and um, all of that is controlled by a data store. For example, um, any game that you have progress on, for example, let's say you were playing a tycoon. Tycoons would have a lot of data stores because they're saving what you had in the tycoon, they're saving your currency, and they're saving a whole lot of other information so that when you rejoin, you're not restarting from scratch because without a data store, your data would just keep getting reset each time you rejoin because the, the data is not being stored anywhere. But with this script, this is where the data is going to be stored so that if a player had to leave suddenly or disconnect, that the data would save. And then when they join back, they start exactly where they originally were. For example, they leave with five coins, they rejoin, they've got their five coins, and then they can continue on because it's no good us having a system like this where a player goes and purchases, for example, five coins. They get the five coins and they leave the stats. Woohoo, yay, great, I've got the five coins. Let me go and leave. I want to go and play some other game now, okay? Oh, no, actually, you know what? I feel like I want to continue playing or join back into this game and continue working on my house, for example. I join back in. Oh, my five coins, which I paid 100 Robux for, is now gone. Oh, well, that was kind of a bit of a waste. Do you see what I mean? It's, it will be pointless in even having the system if you do not have a data store because you're, in a way, technically kind of scamming them because, I mean, you're sp they're spending Robux to get coins, which is not going to even save. So this data store is needed and is key to make this system working. So once you've got your script inside of your server script service, you want to go down to the description of this video, copy and paste script two. It's going to be called something like data store script or something like that. You want to go and remove all the previous code and then you want to go and paste in the new code. Now you're able to see this is quite a large code. I'm not going to go every over every single thing that it exactly does, but basically this all identifies on what everything is, run service, data store service, data, etc., session data, all of that. And then here, this is also like really where everything is being created, where your leader stats are being created. Um, if you don't know what the leader stats are, have, on the top right of your screen, usually it tells you, okay, you've got so much amount of coins, you've got so much amount of eggs, for example, or so much amount of gems. That is all leader stats. So that is exactly what we're creating here. So we're creating our number value, which is actually like the, so the, what the, the currency is added to. It's a, it's a number value, which is called coins. And then also it then goes into the parent of the leader stats. And the leader stats is a folder. And the number value goes into the folder, which is then coins.parent equals the leader stats, which basically means that the coins, this, this number value is going to go into the leader stats folder. I'll show you all how that works a little later on. Now, there are a couple of things we do actually need to change in here, depending on how you want this to work. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to be keeping it as coins because I feel that's most what is commonly used. Now, depending on what you're actually wanting your currency to be called that the player is going to be receiving if they purchase that developer product will depend in the script so whatever your currency is you want to go and change coins to so right here wherever where, wherever i have noted change coins to whatever your currency is called go and change coins right there 
Now you do not need to change the gray coins. These coins that you see here and that are highlighted here, you do not need to change those ones because it doesn't matter if they're called coins or not. It, it really doesn't matter. The only ones that really matter are the green and the blue ones. And I'm gonna give you an example of the blue one here now, right here. So I'll quickly actually go through what, what, where you actually need to change. So you need to change line nine where it says coins. You need to go and change uh, line 29 where it says coins. And this basically, by, by the way, if you do want a player to start off with, let's say five coins, then you're able to change that right here because I've got it at zero. So a player, when they first join into the game and they've never played the game before, they're gonna load in with zero coins. They're gonna join in with zero coins, basically showing that they don't have any coins. But if you wanna go and let them start off with 10, you go and change this to 10, but we're gonna keep it at zero. So change here, line 29. Uh, where else do we need to change here? Line 39 on the blue one where it says coins, we wanna go and change coins to whatever your currency is. Same thing here with line 42. We want to go and change coins to whatever your currency is. Now remember, only the green and blue coin text, not the gray one. So we want to go and change this one right here. And then I'm pretty sure that is all of the coins that are in here. Yes, if there are any other coins, I'll make sure to leave a little note there so you can know where to actually change it. So just go and follow all of that and just make sure that you change it all correctly. So once you've gone and adjusted everything here, click on the X button up here next to your script. And then that is our data saving script for now. If you wanna be a bit more, you know, fancy, you can go and change it to data. You can go and change the name, it doesn't matter. It just be, it's up to you if you wanna be organized, but uh, for this tutorial, we will, because our next script that we're gonna be adding is also located in the subscript service. So we want to click on the plus button next to our service script service and insert another script. Now this is going to be our product handler. And this is basically where everything is handled depending, depending if a purchaser, player purchases a developer product. So now that you've inserted the script inside of service script service, you want to go down to the description of this video and go and get in the final piece of code, which is going to be called um, script three as I'm aware now. And it's going to be called something like product handler. You want to go and copy that code bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. Now, this one is quite easy to follow. Again, this basically identifies your product and your quantity. So do you remember when, oh, these are the IDs from when I did testing here, but obviously these IDs will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, zero. They'll be there for you, but um, these are the IDs earlier. Now, how this exactly works here at the top, it may be a little bit confusing for starters, is we are now adding a quantity to our developer product. So what it does, it, it checks if we, ha we have purchased the developer product through the process receipt, and then it also gives it a quantity. So for example, do you remember the uh, the values that we gave our, um, our uh, developer products here? Remember our five coins and one coins? We wanna go and copy this developer product ID, which we made earlier and we also put in the script and obviously have them in order. So the one coin, we would copy the one coin there, take that back to our script and where it says one is we would change this ID and paste in our new ID. So this basically is making it so this developer product will give us one cash or one coin. And we wanna do the exact same thing with number five. We go back to our game settings over here, monetization, get the five coins, copy ID to clipboard, take that back to the script and change that right there. Now, let's say you have multiple developer products which players are able to purchase. All you do is you just go and copy this, enter there and paste that there. And obviously it's going to change the IDs and change the amount of coins it's going to give. So 500, for example, we'll go put that there and we can do this. Let's just put some other random code in there. And now that if, if a player had to purchase this code here, then they would get 500 currency. And it's as easy as that. You can have a whole bunch of different developer products and it will just add it accordingly, just like that. But for this tutorial, we're just gonna be using the one and five because that's all that's necessary for now. But that is how you're able to add more um, quantities and products depending on how many options you wanna have. Now, also depending on what your currency is called, which we changed in our data script, you wanna change that right here. So. Remember our one is, was called coins. So let's say you change that to cash you change that to cash But we're gonna keep it as coins because that is what is ours now That is all you need to really change Just make sure that your IDs are in correct order and that they line up with the quantity that the player is going to receive and Obviously add more if need be and just go and change this to your currency Which the player is going to be receiving from because basically what happens here is it loads up the leader stats 
process receipt, all of that nonsense. And then if quantity, then local leader stat, we identify our leader stat, which is going to be our coins, which the player is going to be, uh, the, the stats are going to be added to that leader stat, which is coins. It goes leader stop value. So it goes to the leader stat, which is our leader stat of our coins. It goes to the value and then it equals leader stat dot value plus our quantity. So it takes our current value on what we have and then it pluses the quantity that is from our product purchase. So if we had went and purchased the one um, coin de uh, developer product, we would get one quantity, which would be added onto our current value. So now that you've gone and finished up that script there and you've closed the script and everything's saved, we wanna head over to our main Roblox page. And just to give you a proper demonstration on how this all works, you can also go and use the normal play here if you would like to go test it out. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna be going over here, clicking file, publish to Roblox, and we're gonna go test this out on the main Roblox page. As you guys can see, we are now in the base play. And if I go click on our one coin, it will prompt us to purchase the developer product of our one coin and we go and purchase that for the one Robux, you're able to see now it has added one coin to our leader stats. Same thing with the five coin. If we go click on the five coin and we purchase this, the five coins right there for one Robux, you're able to see it adds it up, it adds five coins to our current stats. So now we are sitting at six coins. One plus five equals six, so that would make sense. Now, let's say if we had to go and leave the game and we had to, you know, suddenly disconnect. Oh dear, we disconnected. Now, if we went and joined back into the game after we have left, our data will still be there due to the data saving script. So as you guys can see, we've just joined back in and there is our six coins, which we purchased earlier from the one coin and also the fine coin. There is our six coins. As we have joined back, the six coins are there, meaning the data saving did work. Now, let's say you joined back in and now, oh, let's, I want to purchase another one coin. You're able to go here and purchase another one coin and then it will just be added to the leader stats. And then when you leave, it saves just exactly like what happened in the previous part when we purchased the one and the five. If you guys are a little bit lost, you don't really know what you're doing or you need a little bit of help, feel free to create a ticket in my Discord server and we will happily help you out. But anyway guys, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. If you did enjoy, I'd appreciate it if you do consider subscribing to the channel, turning on the notification bell and also do consider liking the video, I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see everyone in the next Roblox Studio video.